Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to Tripod's Garage. As you see, we got a, a little hornet behind me to do a live unboxing here. So how's everyone doing today? Yeah, I uh, try to do, I'm trying to do a little bit better with my thumbnails. If you go uh, into my early on thumbnails, they weren't as creative as I tried to make them now. So I appreciate uh, that rising Phoenix. So uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's like I could do those thumbnails rather quickly and others it's like, I feel like I spend as much time creating a darn thumbnail as I, as I do editing the darn video. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, giddy up. So yeah, it's uh, a, <laughs> so I'm glad everyone likes that thumbnail. So I figure I want to do something a little bit fun and creative, so. But uh, you know, I always do these super chats, right? If you ever follow and watch me on other live streams, I'm like, first frosty beverage on me. Well, well, it's not. Hopefully, it doesn't wind up on me. So, cheers, everyone. That's uh, you know, happy hump day. Hope everyone's staying safe out there. I'm gonna have a little bit of a sip of my frosty beverage. It is an adult beverage, so I might have gotten a little bit of a so. Uh, I don't have, uh, I, I tell that I don't have, looks good. Well, I, I'm, I've been like picking it up here and there. So it's, uh, at first I was like, oh, I don't know, but I do it actually all on my phone, the thumbnails. So it's, uh, um, it's kind of easier once you start getting into the rhythm of doing them. But the problem is, is Trying to make him unique every time is the pain, you know, so. But uh, anyways, I did get this Hornet from, let me add another camera to the stream here. So, unfortunately, that camera was going to reboot at some time. Maybe not. I applied an update on that machine as I was uh, um, hooking it up, so. Sorry about that if it goes offline, but I have another camera for the unboxing anyways. But uh, anyways, I did receive this uh, um, Hornet by, from Artillery, but all my uh, reviews are my own. And um, they asked that I do an unboxing as well as a review. So there will be an unboxing of this printer as well as a review later on. So I kind of like doing the unboxings live. This one should actually be really easy. So there's been several unboxings already of it. Um, and uh hey thank you 3d painting printing and painting that's jerry if you don't know him please check out his channel awesome channel he loves that resin printing so he's actually got a new big resin printer it's really nice so i just started getting into resin printing myself so hey hvac and greg so so anyways um this if you watch my last video, I just did the um, uh, the Artillery Genius. It's actually right next to it, so we'll get a nice side by side comparison. And that went together real easily. It was honestly the fastest printer I've ever put together, minus it not being already pre assembled. So that one literally would have taken me five minutes. So, what we're going to do is just go ahead and unbox it. What I'd like you guys to do is, and girls, is to put in the chat what you want me to print, you know, something. You know, I could do a standard benchy, but something uh, maybe a little bit faster to print. I mean, a standard benchy could be printed in an hour and a half. So, but uh, if you could, just uh, as I'm doing this, that would be great if you could um, go ahead and think of something for me to print. Because I go onto like Thingiverse and I'm like, I don't know. I just, I see everything and I'm more of a, uh, when I print something, I want it to be like uh, useful. So it's like tools or something, hooks, I don't know. So it's like, when I see something, I get, I don't even know what I want to print. So the calibration cube, I do have that in my, locally on my machine. Those are pretty quick. So. Um, I could do something like that. <laughs> a torture toaster. <laughs> I don't know if we have all that time, but that would be interesting, wouldn't it, to to try that? So, 
Um, any test or calibration tool. Yep. All right. So let me uh, switch to the other uh, camera here and we could uh, start unboxing it. And we'll remove the other one for right now. So my back will be turned a little bit, so I'll try to monitor chat as best as I can. I I uh, had to, uh, I hope everyone, can everyone hear me okay? So before I turn my back, just hit yes or no. So if there's any echoing or anything. Um, uh, really, Tim, I don't, I don't want to ruin this machine by printing a mini version of that. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I actually will be receiving, um, another wireless mic to review. I actually reviewed this one on my channel a long time ago, about a year ago, and it's been working out pretty good. I think Jerry uses the same one, same with uh, Tim. And, uh, seems like uh, all these manufacturers use the same type of uh, well-packed materials here, very dense foam. And uh, got our, our nice bag of parts here. And uh, nope, no snips in this or scraper. So we'll go through that bag in a little bit. Get the instruction manual. And this is possibly the most unique item here. Okay, so this is this is the Bowden tube and the wiring in one. So um, this is considered a consumable. It actually, it should last the, the the life of the machine. That's what artillery says. So yeah, it's uh this reminds me of when I first saw it. Reminds me of like a microphone. And just minus uh, the jack minus tube in the, in the middle of it. I think it's rather unique. It's nice to see manufacturers doing something different. So over here is the hot end. Don't want to put that off to the side here. It's all way buried. Oh, well, we may have to take that out later. <laughs> Sorry. We have our spool holder. Careful not to look that other camera. This was protecting. Take this out. All right. So in, on this one, it's a little bit different. Your, <laughs> your Z is actually on the top, it's not on the bottom. So that's also something a little bit different. Let's put this off to the side. And we have oh, our port right off to the side. And we have our bumblebee down in here. Well, Hornet. But everyone on the other streams have been calling the um, bumblebee. And they have their typical warning, do not remove before finished assembly. 
And let's put this off to the side. And the last and final thing is the hot end. It's right here. Pretty cool. Now you can guess if you look at it this way, you see why it's called the Hornet. I believe the printer will go over it as it's printing is uh, around 250-ish, I believe. Oh, that box just landed on Bear's pillow. He's not gonna be very happy about that. And Bear will be in here shortly. It was dinner time and he's been barking a lot. So yeah, he's in. Actually, you probably hear him right there. He's in timeout. <laughs> so the delivery drivers are a little late today, and he knows the sound of every delivery person from FedEx, UPS, fun times. So you only have three wires over here. Let me move this camera down a little bit. We got our hot end. Got our... Let's now go through our bag of tools. All right. Size, oop, micro SD. <laughs> and you have your adapter. That's pretty weird looking. USB adapter. Get the extra end stop here. Switch. Put things back in there. Extra nozzle. Two V rollers and some fibers. So I don't need this. My computer has a full size SD. We'll put this off to the side. All right. Well, thank you. That that's uh, two eighty. Oh, I will go ahead and take a look. Sorry, I've been busy with uh, work in this. So I will definitely uh, take a look. You know, don't, you know, if you try to reach me through my um, Gmail, be persistent. <laughs> so, uh, because sometimes it's, uh, things do land in my spam folder. So you got your set of Allens and your three, your, your screws here. These screws are for, your hot end assembly. So, what should have happened? Huh? This happened with someone else. And it happened to me. Okay. So, right here. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's two of them. There's three. <laughs> oh, where do they all go? There's one, two. Oh boy, where did the, I heard them all fall? Well, I heard three fall. Uh oh. So. The way this is supposed to work is that these go into these extrusions like this, and they're not supposed to really fall out. So they tap them in, and uh, yeah, <laughs> well, it looks like they fell out. So I'm going to need to check the box and see if the other two are in there. Brian Bynes, when he did this, it, uh, one was in the chassis in the, in the back here. So, hmm. 
And plus I need to get a pair of snips too, since that's not included with it. Did you guys hear two or three balls? Oh, I see one in the box. Two in the box. All right. We're in luck. We don't have to. We have, we don't have to go fishing in the in the chassis. Or the other two. Yeah, I think they need to um, work on their packaging. <laughs> I haven't covered the power supply manufacturer just yet. It is on the side here. Let me see if I can get it. I'm concentrating on getting these uh, bolts in on the bottom. Because uh, there is actually threads, and then there's a gap, and then more threads. So that's how they were supposed to stay in place. So it doesn't look to be a mean wheel. It's probably like a Chang Ling or. One of those variants. What's up, uh, Mr. Lama? Thanks for coming on. Let's uh, also do the other camera since it's still. It hasn't rebooted yet. It didn't say the update was going to reboot that computer or not. So. All right, so yeah, it looks to be a, a Ching Ling power supply, three hundred and sixty. Watts. Right, so this is uh, again pretty unique. I don't want to turn it around the other way. Or no, it is the correct way. And as you know, I'm not a, if you've seen any of my assembly videos, I'm not a fan of leading printers up, up to the side, kind of cringe whenever I see anyone do it. So I really try to refrain myself from doing it. It was a uh, two that fell off onto the mark that fell off onto the table. The other two were in the box. So I always get the screws getting started here, and then I uh, work them. I tighten them after all four are snug, and then I tighten them all down. So there is going to be a couple giveaways. I did not hit that. <laughs> well, Princess Solid, I did not hit that uh, milestone of <laughs> 2,200 uh, subscribers in basically 24 hours. Not going to happen. <laughs> so, and plus, I'm not a fan of doing anything like that, anyways. So I, you know, I, it's it wasn't necessary. But uh, it was all in good fun from uh, Prince and Solid. So 
I actually ordered filament from them the first time and you know, about two or three weeks ago. And I've been a loyal fan of their filament ever since. I've actually given it away myself without uh, any endorsements from them. That's how much I do like their filament. Anyone decide on what I should print my first print on this? I do like the color of this. Of all the printers I have, Number eleven. This one is is the uh, most unique looking. I felt like a never ending screw. Size of resin printer. I think this is going to be the fastest assembly video I've ever done. Bye. So if, if anyone watched uh, Joe Telling's video on this, he uh, accidentally unplugged it. And it caused the Z Access not to go down after you plugged it back in. I'm wondering if I should do the same thing. Why don't you guys comment and let me know if I, oops, unplug it and see if I get the same experience. I mean, I do have the, the Genius right next to it, right over here. So I could theoretically have a replacement driver. All right, so. Right here. And this is a little bit of a tighter fit right there. Put that in. And you have your get a little bit closer in on this shot here for you guys. Uh, you know, you get an $1,100 lens on a camera, you would think that it would perform better, right? All right. And stop. And then we have our... Ah, well, in our, like I said, we didn't get clippers, so let me go and get some clippers. <laughs> First thought, quality of the printer. Well, so far, so good. It's definitely the easiest printer to assemble that I've had. So, all looking good. Just got to get some snips. They're not included. Now I have. <laughs> well, there we go. And just this one up a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so we snip these. One, and two. And now we get to attach the most unique part of this printer is the Bowden tube 
and connector. So yeah, this is very unique. Get rid of that. Ah, so yeah, Erica. Okay, I'll repeat the, the process to test the failure. I think that's, you know what, it's worth to try, right? Because you wanna make sure that this isn't a repeat. Well, uh, it's kind of hard to put this on when you don't have the hot end on, right? So, I put this on backwards or not? Okay. <laughs> All right. So you get these three screws right here. This one. Nope. This one. Yep. Let's get this hot end on. Three screws. I know I'm ruining the shot. There we go. Get the hands out of the way, right? Got to do a build video the correct way. You can't have your hands anywhere in the shot where stuff happens. You get called out by the trolls on YouTube. Nice hand shot, tripod. I know. They're like model hands. Everyone says that, but. I do try to use the tools they provide. Sometimes it takes longer to do longer sets of allen keys that I have, big handles. Well, I provide a full blown experience. So yeah, well, it took the longest try about to put the put this uh, printer together. Ah, you know, I don't need a hot end. Three screws. Oh, okay. Sacrifice on YouTube, guys and girls. Things I do for you guys. All right. Nice and stuff. All right, now we can put the Bowden tube slash wire harness on. Now it is keyed, so it can only fit one way, and the notches are in. One side, not on the other. Ooh, from my stereo, let's get this. Not rich. Got the key for that one. Very parking at something. He'll come in shortly after everyone's home. All right, so one end is longer than the other here, not by much. So I'm going to switch this around. And there we go. So that one definitely goes on that side. This one goes on this side. I 
That is it. It's all assembled. Pretty amazing. <laughs> So let's uh, go ahead and move this sheet here. All right, so it's another 110 volt bed. So this is a uh, 110 volt bed, glass bed, and it's not removable. So that's been my, one of my major gripes with it is that this glass bed should be removable. What are your thoughts? Yes, yeah, it definitely uh, looks like a bumblebee. So, um, power cord? Oh, right in front of me. Oh, I guess I should check the voltage. And the voltage is correct. One second. How do how do you replace it? Um, well, you have to unsolder it from the bottom. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's not good. I mean, and I, all honesty, that's like I said. I mean, you can always put something on top and use a clip. But yeah, let's actually take a look at this. Uh, you know, move this one camera down so it's no longer. And let's move the other one. All right, so yeah, so it's got decent strain relief on the back. Just a little bit. So I would assume that uh, it's all just underneath these four screws right here. Let's hope we focus here. Well, there's four screws right here for the strain relief, and I assume that's soldered on. Oh, really? Mr. Wilson, you're, you're destroying your uh, Ender 5 and Ender 5 Plus uh, plates a lot? I'm actually still in my original. I'm doing some, uh, my Ender 5 Plus just did these uh, carbon fiber parts here. I think they actually turned out pretty nice. This is uh polycarbonate, carbon fiber. Your gears for uh, the drivetrain for the next uh, droid build. All right, so let's go ahead and plug her in. And um, this light on this camera here. There we go. That helps. And uh, yeah, that's the, not that great to inflate really in there. What's the second longest thing? Oh, getting the film off the display. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Oh, but I still have one more piece. I still have a spool holder. Oh, you know what? Let's do it. Very gentle. All 
right. It's time for some elective surgery. Ah, not that gratifying. It's just a tiny display. So, but uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> yep, go to watch John for three minutes to take the film off. Yes. All right. Artillery logo and. Uh, very current version of Marlin there, and yeah, I mean, it's... Let's see if you can focus on it there. Yeah, not too bad. So this, um, this doesn't have the power on resume, you know, so if you have a, a uh, power outage, yeah, you're not going to uh, be able to print it. <laughs> so your print is going to get ruined. All right, so Bowman's full holder goes right here. Snaps in. Pretty easy. Smoke test. Oh, now you're now you're talking. correct something I heard when the first jumped on the bed is actually 24 volt DC with a 110 volt sticker just to indicate how the PSU switch test ah really all right okay ah uh, shame on them because look at what we see here yep but it's also on that one too <laughs> So they just did not take the sticker off. Shame, shame, shame on them. So which which color do we go with? I say we try. A nice crushed roll of printed solid. What do you say? So check out that filament. Wow, it actually looks blue. It's actually a, a purple. So it's purple. It's called purple eater. I'm gonna switch the camera. So well, I'm a one man crew here. Well, three three quarters, three quarters of a person. Let's see. Come on, you can focus. Darn camera. I think we didn't have this on autofocus. I'm having a heck of a time. This is actually why I don't even use this camera for YouTube anymore. 
autofocus. It's garbage. I'm a full person? Oh, thanks. Anyways, so really dig this color. So let's give this one a, a shot. What do you say? So I made a deal with like Loyal Moses about something that I would promote another channel on here or another stream. So if he comes on, I have to show a picture of something. So we'll see if he comes on. Yeah, it was trendy back in the day, but uh, I think everyone getting a nice laugh out of it. Wow, this camera, is, you know, it's got a Sony lens in it, and it just thinks that it's a blue, and it's a purple. That, that's so bizarre. I do like uh, how this is in here. Oh, wow. Now that's how film it should load, right? All right, so we're ready to print. Did anyone decide what we are going to test print? Should we look on the card or what? So what have we decided? <laughs> cameras, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get it. So, yeah, so it's on the Canon, it's the one that's I'm having a problem with the focusing. So, it's an SL2 with an $1,100 lens. So, oh, the toaster, you guys are killing me. Okay, we got the calibration cube. Benchy banana scale. <laughs> okay. Baby R5 dome top. <laughs> they actually may not take that long. Okay, let's check the card. All right, let's do that first. And then if it goes quickly, you could try to print out something else. Okay. So let's move this camera down. And side here. Oh, it would help if I switch my camera around. A four hundred percent toaster. I don't even know if my Ender 5 Plus could fit that. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we get a cube. So I guess we do their cube first and then go from there, huh? Turn blue. Okay, so here, let's turn off the light. So we can dim the light on this. Okay, so that it's close, but look it. It's like blue and then purple. Yeah, you know what? We should recommend that to print it solid. You know, like a, a bluish purple filament. That would be kind of cool. 
All right. So we're going to do the cube. Make it nice and easy. Fast. Uh, first, we're going to heat up the bed here. And we're going to clean it. Sixty degrees. All right. You know what? Let me take a turn this way. And then once it starts printing. Purple. There we hey, you know what? Printed salad. Practical printing. Just named your next filament. Purple. Love it. You better patent it before they do. All right, so I have this little contraption here. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Was not prepared for this dream. Everything is by under five plus for printing the parts for the droids here. I'm sorry. Man, I really dig carbon fiber. It looks so nice, but it's so expensive. Oh, uh, yeah, the blue light special. Uh, but I really think uh, purple, I, uh, you know, I do like it. So I got my lint-free shop towels I use. Yeah, this is definitely not an AC heated bed. Um, because it would, it would have been heated up by now. That, <laughs> that genius heats up so quickly. Um, when I'm printing that uh, carbon fiber polycarbonate, it takes the Ender 5 Plus like five minutes for it to heat up to 100 for the bed. It's an awesome level. Nozzle. And we'll level that too. Oh, there's Moses. All right. So let's, uh, as we're waiting for this to. <laughs> oh, I did promise Moses something. So let's switch it back to me here for a few seconds. Because I know the printer waiting for it to warm up is so exciting. So let me um, have a sip of my frosty beverage there, Mr. Loyal. Because you're going to love this picture. I know you will. So if you are, uh, if you follow uh, <laughs> um, Moses on Twitter, he has this. Uh, we go out and onto Twitch, and was it Coplex? Um, very good DJ, right? And they're doing '80s theme. Well, I was born in the '70s, grew up '80s, and um, yeah. So let's see. <laughs> Oh boy, I I did promise him I was gonna do it. So so yeah, so I'm proudly bald here. Okay, I was losing my hair at an early age in the back thanks to father's genes because my brother he got the one of the, my two brothers got the good hair and he still shaved his head. I don't understand why. So get ready for this. So in the eighties. In the early, early 90s, I had a mullet. And here is my school ID from, this was 
this was um so the school id is the way they work they took your class picture and then they used the last year's class picture so here it is yep mr mullet himself uh yep had the I mean, consider it more like a MacGyver type of haircut. So, yeah. I did promise, Moses, I was going <laughs> to. Now, so that, to give you a time frame from that picture to the next one, I'm going to do a whole video about my cancer and everything. I've had it twice. Okay. I'm uh, 47. So, <laughs> um yeah you know what uh moses we can do that we'll put it under this cord it's fine um so now six months later i figured i i was like you know what let's show what i look like six months later that was after my leg amputation in six months or five months into chemotherapy. So uh, yeah, that, I lost my leg when I was 15. And no, I didn't smoke. It was just someone gave me that hat, Marvel hat. I never smoked. So it was cancer in the knee. It was a sarcoma. So I go from a mullet to bald. <laughs> so and then back to a mullet again. I'll show some more pictures at another time. And, and then I you know, said, all gone. So, yeah, it was uh, six months of chemo. Uh, it was once every six, uh, once every month. And uh, what they'll do is put a, a porta cath in me. And I found that to be the most horrible experience. What they would do is roll a towel, put it, and I would lay on the back, and they'll push out your chest. And then they would put a porta cath. One, uh, they had to switch sides of every treatment. I was in there for six to seven days, watching like five bottles just slowly dripping. And they would just replace it and replace it. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So let's uh, let's do that little switch again. So I went from this. <laughs> uh, to this in about eight months. So, you know, it's uh, you, you you get the, you know, the like the cancer eyes, right? Where you're just exhausted, and I, I I don't use these crutches. I use forearm crutches. Those things were such a pain. But yeah, so yeah, so that was me with the mullet. <laughs> so I did promise Moses if he was going to jump on that uh, I was uh, going to show it to him. So, and uh, I was looking for other pictures, but that'll be for uh, when I do my uh, my kind of like my life story with the battle as I've had with it. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that, Moses. <laughs> so <laughs> um, let's uh, go back to this uh, leveling. Um, I got other ones, other mullets. <laughs> so um, let me get a piece of paper here. Oh, and thanks uh, for the super chat as well. I was too caught up with you uh, doing the picture request. So everything is heated up now. Let's see here. Bed leveling. And we're going to level the bed. Very quiet, very, very quiet. Yes, other mullets. Oh, okay, so here's the thing with, um, since we're leveling, it's not exactly the most fun thing to do. Um, my uh, my parents, you know, it was a pretty nasty divorce. And my uh, father decided to steal the family album and basically every, all the pictures. So I have almost 
general interest uh, adolescent men. Um, and uh, it's kind of a shame. Oh, it's a, it's a There we go. Um, so it's a. I have very little pictures to go off. I had one when I was a, a baby, and just a few growing up. I actually kind of have to rely on some friends from grade school for some of their pictures from their yearbooks and class pictures. Oh, wow. I didn't think it was going to be this many points. I didn't like to cook some that. Oh, uh, this, uh, so this was a document camera. It was first uh, discovered on Neri's channel. And then uh, Tim from with 3D, he started using it. And I think it works rather well. Um, oh, wow, this is a lot of points here. Not, was it nine points? I'm used to four or five on these things, huh? Okay, so the second longest thing, leveling the bed. Everyone knows you level the bed right. You can get up. The bed's close to me. Yeah, I think it, I mean, the, the picture quality seems pretty good. I like that, um, that it has a built-in light so I could uh, decrease brightness on it. I, honestly, I don't, I almost feel like I'm a never ending battle with this, doing it this way, with leveling it. Nine points with leveling. Oh, and it's uh, it's it's got a eight megapixel camera. It's the uh, the Sony camera that's inside sensor. Well, good night. Uh, Practical printing. All right, this one. Oh, this better be pretty close. This <laughs> this is pretty tedious, guys and girls. I'm almost tempted just to do the four corners. Get these. I mean, for me, this feels like it should be for when it, if it has a automatic bed level, I'm not. You know what? That's what we're going to do. We're just going to do the four corners because, and then we'll come back and check the bed. Middle, well, thank you. Much better. <laughs> Sorry, but that's, I feel like I'm battling something I won't win by doing all those points. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not.
It's a uh, 220 by 220 by 250 filled volume. Right. Well, I'm not done with leveling. I'm sure that front is. This front's all whacked now. So, yeah, kind of close. Nine point levels um, manually, I don't get it. I, th I think I'll be here all day if I chose to do it that way. I think we're done. Nope. You're not done. Okay, there. I'm not allowed. No drag at all on that. Go ahead and clean this. And uh, get rid of all this. It is super quiet, just like the ingenious, the beeping is. Right. Um, so what happens is, uh, David, when you do the checkout, it changes the price. I know it's a uh, weird. So, anyways, this is a uh, got this uh, little uh, dispenser at a dollar store. Actually, my daughter Madison showed me this. It's a few uh, little squirts there. Like perfect. I just don't know what kind of coating they use, but um, yeah, it's a uh, pretty weird. And I did not even touch that green sticker. That's why I originally thought it was from. I did it clean the other glass bed, but it's not. See? Weird. I don't, I don't know what that is. Hey, Gary. Price of US is about $280. So we're going to print the cube.
it's like the third note. Yeah, the camera has the same beep as the as the project. And what, let's see if we can use the other camera. All right. And let's switch this one over back to me. There we go. It, I can't even hear this, but the fans haven't kicked on on the sides yet. It's working on the first layer, but it's, it's quiet. Really, really quiet. Okay, so... But yeah, so again, I, you, uh, Rising Phoenix, you're the one that pointed out that that's not an AC bet. That's not, not 110. So, and it, it clearly isn't because it did not heat up nearly as fast as the, the Genius. I mean, the Genius is, <laughs> I am, I, I can't wait so impressed with that. I didn't want to sound like a fanboy. <laughs> so, but it, it just worked great out of the box. And so far, this one is. Uh, so, so cheers to everyone. Um, so my daughter did this under her heat press. I'm working, I'm trying to see if I, I like this logo for just small things. But uh, I don't know what you guys think about it. But um, I also like, uh, there's another one I want for a different change up the banner and stuff. So. So cheers. In a little bit, we'll start doing a, a giveaway. And the way the giveaway will work, I'm just going to do a, a keyword um, in the chat, and we'll let Nightbot pick. So, and this will be for US only. Sorry. <laughs> so, and be for a roll of printed solid filament, and there might be a couple more. We'll see. See, see how the active to chat gets. You know, I do, a, I say a giveaway question mark because you know what? I like, you know, I know everyone here and I don't want people to just join my live streams or my YouTube channel just for a giveaway. And it was really nice of Print and Solid to actually, they're giving away two rolls. So um, it was really nice of them. And they had some fun with me on Twitter you know, and uh, Instagram, you know, hey, let's get tripod up to 10,000. Uh, hmm. No, <laughs> I gained like three subscribers and, you know, and plus that's not the way I do things. So, but it was still fun regardless. So, so, um, oh, the carbon fiber prints. You want to take a, take a look at that? So, this is, um, on the under five plus back there, it's a uh, printing um, carbon fiber. I mean, it, it, 
It's pretty darn amazing. Let me uh, switch to the other camera for that. Um, yeah, it's a uh, polycarbonate. This uh, document camera works really good for stuff. Look at that. This is a 0.12. I figured for the, I'm doing this for the drivetrain for the next uh, droid robot that we're building. I mean, I, I, my, I am running the Micro Swiss hot end, per se, actually, of uh, Mr. Mr. David over there. He gave me uh, my first hot end, and then, um, um, Mark Swiss actually endorsed me for their, a, uh, to install their direct drive. On the device. It's, it's at 0.12. All these parts here took, this is um, one of the parts that got messed up. So it was dragging. The problem is, is with this, it will drag the filament around sometimes. And that's why I, I actually had to clean this up. These, I didn't do any post-processing. I mean, look at that. That is, it's a shame. You're not going to see these parts either. You know what you're going to see? You may see the, the bottoms, but you won't see this. That, I mean, you can't even see the lines. I mean, it's a shame. All these pieces are going to be hidden inside. <laughs> it's so, it's, I mean, here. So we compare this to the lens camera cover. Amazing. I mean, yeah, it's uh, I I love printing with it, but these rolls, that's it's a Pryline roll. I want to get the Atomic, so that's my next one to purchase. And I heard so many good things about Atomic. And uh, um, yeah, I'll show that a little bit later on there. So, or they could check out my thumbnail on my channel um, for the next droids. It's uh, called the Eggbot. But if if I could, I'll print in the carbon fiber all the time. It's it's just so nice to watch. I mean, it looks like an injected molded part. My my best benchy came from that from a carbon fiber. No post processing. It fell a few times, but it's a little dirty. But <laughs> if it wasn't so darn expensive, it's twice the cost of a regular roll of PLA. So. Um, so I'm running at 260 on the hot end and 100 on the plate for that. And it's, uh, that's Pryline, um, um, polycarbonate, um, carbon fiber. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm, I come away thoroughly impressed with it. This cube is building fast, so we may get another print off on this thing. Yeah, it, it, I, you know what? I'm really tired of printing benchies, but when when you have a benchy that comes out like that, I mean, it's you know that's the only problem was just like a little bit of the cooling in the front, but when you, you can't even see the layer lines, I mean, it's the fiber just hides it so well. But again, I'm printing these. I print slow, okay, a majority of the time. I'll do it 60 or lower. So this is doing it. Um, for those parts that you saw, I'm doing those at at um, 50. So doing it at a direct drive, 260 degrees, all metal hot end, micro Swiss on the Ender 5 Plus back there. Okay. And um, it's it for those uh, six parts, it took 30 hours. So it's a little bit of dedication on there. 
And um, the max uh, amount of machines I could run in here, because I only have a 50 amp, 15 amp breaker for the whole front and for the garage and the foyer, 15 amps. So if I run a third machine, it pops it. Yeah, nylon, um, I, that's uh, you just doing regular nylon or are you going to do uh, fiber as well? So, I, <laughs> you know, it, it does, um, I can start wearing gloves, like when I start handling it more, like if I'm cleaning the parts, because again, it will like blob up and drag some of the um, the fiber material at sometimes. And that's what happened with those smaller gears. It um, This was the first part to print. So it, it dragged some of the filament into that, into those gears right there. So as I was scraping away, I'm like, ah, my, my fingers started to itch a little. So I'm gonna start using gloves. Um, Cause I never really printed anything really big with it. And um, yeah, it's a uh, time for some new wiring. Oh, what do you mean by time for some new wiring? I say, let me uh, check Nightbot here, and I want I want to test to make sure that it's reading everyone. So, what I want everyone to do is just type in hello, and let's see how many people come up, and we'll do our first giveaway. Yeah, one circuit, 15 amps. It's crazy. So this side of the garage is my nightmare garage, okay? This is the nice side that I built up. So there's going to be another video series I've sponsored. Um, so this um, wall here is – I actually have a sponsorship to do the whole side of the garage with this um, slat wall by Pro Slat. So they sent me four boxes. So the whole garage is gonna look like this soon. So it's gonna be a lot of work. Guy with one leg on a ladder. So yeah, it's it's gonna, I'm gonna be really sore. <laughs> I was so sore with this, but I'm not gonna do a lot of wiring like I did with this with the LED lights and stuff. So. Oh, did anyone catch out, catch out their new show on Tim Allen's new show on, on History Channel? It's pretty good. So, some wiring money, yes. <laughs> well, I'm self-funded in a lot of ways, but it's nice to get some endorsements like Pro Slat and Artillery and, you know, some of these 3D printers able to do stuff. So. Uh, you know, they do help a little bit, but it's about um, it's about me showing other handicapped people that they can do things too. You know, it's uh, always tackle things. <laughs> I, I should have been on YouTube like 15 years ago when I was ripping off the siding on the house and fell off the ladder and got right back on the ladder and ripped it off even more. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, that would have gone viral. I probably would have had five hundred thousand subscribers by now. But you know, it was it's stuff that uh, you know. I mean, I've been doing stuff like this ever since I lost my leg or had it removed, however you want to say it. And it's it's they will help with some of the things. It's like the other tasks, like you know, pulling out the side by side of the garage. But all that side, it's all me. I'm gonna do the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, so that's where I was going with that rising is thank you. Thank you very much um, Is I'm going to get a sub panel put in over here. So this is my daughter's station over here. That's her uh, um, her, her shirt press and uh, hat press and everything and I'm kind of been There's a roll of filament. Don't tell her I'm putting stuff over there. So um, It's a uh, I'm gonna get a sub panel put in so that way I could run a welder that I have, I've had for over 20 years. I haven't been able to use, well, haven't been able to use for the last 17 years since we've moved in because it needs at least a 20 amp. 
So we're going to get, I'm going to get a 240 put in. And so, and the whole, this whole garage is going to be rewired independently from the foyer. So, or I'm going to rely more on that, that box. Anyways, so what we're going to do, let me check Nightbot. We're going to, um, Oh, there it is. All right, see everyone in there. So we're gonna do so the way it's gonna work is for the get first giveaway and for dollars, is that if you are selected by Nightbot by doing the keyword. You're going to need to go on to my about information on my YouTube and unhide my email and put your um, email address and and address or your address. Email me and that way we can get you this role fulfillment. So, I mean, that's just the way it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. And this is why I want people to type and hit enter. That's for the first giveaway. So just go ahead and type it in. And um, we'll let this run for a minute or two. Well, there's Oh, you. <laughs> well, you type that in. So C3DS. So this is US only, though. Yes, so US only. I didn't get confirmation from them that they would ship anywhere else. So I would have to at least uh, say that it's US only. And, um, they do run out of colors rather quickly, so you need to let me know. This is for the Jesse PLA, the $19 roll, and it's nice stuff. So so we'll let the – for the filament. Hey, built over bot. Did you get yours? Did you get your roll of Princess Solid yet? I think your name is, what, Robert? Is it? I think it is. So and you got the orange, safety orange. But I, I did send you, I didn't check your email. I did send it to you. I did say I was going to order it for you in the morning, and I did. So I would say it, it should probably arrive by the end of the week. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and everyone in. I'm going to roll it in like 10 seconds. The, the key is printed solid. So this is the, the standard $19 Chris Travis. I'm pretty quick. You know, as long as I check my spam only filter only once a week because I get a lot of emails. You got to remember that uh, any YouTube replies go into the same inbox. So. All right, gonna roll it. Five, four, three, two, up, ah, no space. So, Victor, get rid of the space. And one more time. I'll wait for Victor to throw his in. So, one, all one word printed solid. Same with the. Uh, C3, a DS, all together, one word, printed solid. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Chris. Uh, you're, you're not that far from me. You're about 40 minutes away with uh, no traffic. All right.
I'm um, just uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, the capitals don't it's, uh, it's not case sensitive. It's case insensitive. So there you go. Perfect. And there you go. I'm not going to spoil it because I already know, but it's going to post it. There it is. Rising Phoenix. Winner, winner. Congratulations. Yeah, I did pick it. You were you did enter it uh, C3DS in time. So I waited for you to post yours. And I then I, once I saw it, I did roll it. So congrats. So again, uh, so why, uh, so Rising Phoenix, um, what I want you to do is send me an email and I'll work with you with the correct filament uh, through email like I did with uh, Robert um, and uh, we'll get you going. All right. So, so this, uh, this is actually going really fast. <laughs> You know what's weird though is that these cooling fans are not doing much on the side. Again, it looks blue on this camera. Oh, you know what? They just actually sped up another. Then the next print, we won't be, uh, we won't watch the whole print, but I'll kick off another print and I'll get a better camera. Yeah, it's 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 you know what I'm addicted to it. You know, it's 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 a little bit fatter of a spool than your normal spool, but I actually kind of like it because it's it's just a little bit wider. Um, let me show you what I need. Dropped. So, just a little bit wider. But yeah, it's 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 great. The colors are vibrant, and like I said, this printer is very very quiet. Let me uh, do this and uh, move this over. And no reason I don't like being. Let's just do it that way. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's definitely going. I didn't look at the G code to see how it's it's definitely printing fast. Um, and I have both the printers running in here, and I don't know about here. I mean, let me take a look at my. It that is pretty darn quiet. I don't know how much you picked up with that, but. I can hear my Ender 5 Plus because it's got that 500 watt mean well in there, and those fans are just can get obnoxious. And plus, it's the bed's at 100 degrees right now, so it's 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 turning out. Those fans are on all the time. So, hey Dan, freshman orientation. Oh man, congratulations, buddy. It, it really is. You know, the thing is, is I've been into 3D printing for, you know, around a year and a half. And it's a shame that I just started ordering from them. <laughs> so, tell you what, if... Uh, Someone wants to join the stream, let me know, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about the community. I'll throw out the link, you know, and Jerry, I know you will jump on really quick. So let's give someone else a, some, a chance to come on. So what I'll do is 
you know, just to keep it nice and fresh, let me uh, put the um, link out there. Okay. So if someone wants to join one at a time, you know, tell me what projects you're working on and stuff and uh, just keep this going. We're going to actually give away two more rolls of Jesse film. One more from Printed Solid and one from me. So yes, I like you guys and girls. So let me uh, throw this in here. So <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't print that much. To, I actually have about 20 rolls of filament now. So it's, uh, the, what I need is now is I got a TPU. And so, which is kind of hard to come by right now. So I, I have a 95 and an 85. And I'm, um, I have a oh, three quarters of a roll of the 85 left. Uh oh, you guys talking. I haven't seen uh seen Chris in a while. He hasn't streamed. Or I haven't got any notifications that he's streamed. So Yeah, cheers to everyone. Adult frosty beverages. Yeah, so I'm not going to show my um, my pictures again unless Moses comes back on. So, <laughs> I think it's just cooking along. All right, so let's see. I don't know if Rising has, he's coming on. Where's the droid? <laughs> the droid's in pieces right now. So, oh, but I do have the other ones. So here's one. So, and then, by will being Bear in here shortly. He's been a little jerk. So he's, then I have this one with a real camera. So if you were on the last week's live stream, on Friday, that was a big hoopla. So, when Rising Phoenix is ready, he'll you know, have a seat, and then I'll add him in. That was a big. Hey there, Rising Phoenix is ready. You'll. Oh yeah, you want to mute your other stream? I'm hearing sound, so I apologize. Oh no problem. It's like being on the radio, right? So like, turn it down before you get on. So the problem is, is I, I have the other one going on my computer as well. And so I, when the countdown timer starts, I, I quickly go on to see what the delay is. And then, because then I mute that sound on the other side. So, so wow. how are you doing there, Ryzen? What's your, I'm what's your real good. name? Uh, I'm I'm Kowalski. I live out in Phoenix and you can see in the back, uh, my Android 5 Pro is actually Huh. There you go. Now wow, there's a delay lag. I'm not used to it. I gotta. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it. ignore, <laughs> ignore. Just move that okay. one off. So yeah, that you're. I don't look at that one almost at all. <laughs> so, right. All right. So you're you're wow. building the the R two, huh? Like I'm one that we building were building. multiple R two. So I'm. Uh, I uh, got that, 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 uh, printing on the R5, the Ender 5 uh, Pro on the right, printing then, in PETG, and then on the left I'm printing on the Ender 5, the PLA, and sadly, 
Ah. See how close I am? I mean, literally like 12 layers from being done and it stopped. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah, that, that dome, it's like a nail biter when it's, yeah, you know, it, it's a nail biter getting it when it's spanning. It's like, oh, is it going to work out right? Well, I think it's a cure problem because. Yeah, get well there, Maker Viking. So, yeah, I've had a couple fails on it. So, uh, but I will say putting the Swiss Micro, Micro Swiss uh, hot ends on both of those was by far the best upgrade I did. Uh, and, and you know what? People put on these expensive hot ends. And you know what? Yeah. That it, For what? It's You know, this thing does the same. It's all metal hot end. It does everything that uh, you know ones that cost two or three times the price of this does. Yeah. So oh yeah so yeah it's a uh, I I you know I mean I was one of the first ones to get the Ender Five Plus and discovered the my only yeah. like my third video was my power supply burning up. Yeah. So uh, I, I when I ordered my Ender Five Plus I got the Meanwell upgrade when I ordered it because of your video I was like I'm not even messing with this. Oh, you know, it was so, was so heart wrenching. I um, <laughs> did the uh, I did the board to quiet it down too, uh, but I'll tell you that Ender Five Pro has been perfect almost from beginning. Uh, I I just did TPU for the first time, and I don't have them here, but I did all the wheels for the minis in okay. TPU instead of PLA. Yeah, I was thinking about doing it um, for, and what I did differently from the other guys is I um, screwed the servo horns on. Uh -huh. I took a drill and I took the extra screws and I drilled it on, and that and so it was just super glue. So that way, I, if I need to take it apart, I don't have to break well, anything. I oh. oh, okay. I thought you were frozen there. Well, I, well uh, so other projects, uh, I'm the home of somewhat completed projects. So uh, up on top, I've got my uh, Stormtrooper armor being printed. And then in the blue tote over here, there is the uh, mini that Schwartz does that you can find on Bedalis. So it's the next size up. From okay. the babies. Okay. And but I printed all the gear parts and resin on my I got a photon S. You know, is uh, is a just regular resin or is it uh Yeah, it's like Jerry would do. It's the okay. but I just figure it's gonna wear better okay. than than PLA. Yeah, because I'm totally new to resin. You know, I'm I, I'm doing mine I'm using mine specifically more for castings. Well, uh -huh. You know. So I'm not you know, for smaller parts or for more refined, you know, because it, I mean, the resolution on it's like amazing. Well, right. my first printer was my Photon S and I bought it actually, man, my hair is a mess. All right. Uh, oh, so but I did it for minis for d and I've got like a couple hundred little miniatures that we printed and we're going to paint. So it's, I don't have any here. They're all downstairs in the cabinet. So, it, so if you want detail in small objects, resin is bit better than anything I've been able to get out of my printers, especially when you're talking. Oh, uh, uh, that's no, that's yeah. I, I just wonder about durability. I don't know how strong the resin is. There are some oh, videos out there. They so. you no, know, no. You, I mean, I have you know. Unfortunately, the only many. Yeah, the only mini I have right here is, you know, this is one you buy from, uh, who are the guys up in Oregon? And these, you know, you can drop, but the minis I print in resin, I got to try what Jerry's using that strengthener thing. Because if you yeah. drop them, they break. And that, you know, and then you have super glue them back together. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, I watched that video where basically you fill it basically up to the top with that, you know, to make, some, make it like a little pliable and flexible 
that's, so that's that's my next uh, experiment. Yeah, my Maker Viking, we all wish you the best of health. Get better soon. I, you know, hopefully yeah, uh, wherever you have, um, you can overcome and uh, we're all here for you. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, it is done. Well, I'll let you it, it doesn't want to... What's that? So, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. So the print is done. But. It's a little uh, going away for the bed to cool off a little bit. So that's one thing. I love glass beds. I'm a glass beds fan. But because I have the patience for it. And, uh, um, but it just, uh, um, it just takes a little while for it to cool off and pop off. So we'll give it uh, a few more, few more minutes here. And then in a few more, in about five, ten more minutes, we'll do our next giveaway. If people are still on. So we got 34 people watching, so. <laughs> yes. I knew someone was going to say it. Um, I may, um, since these glass beds are not removable, I may actually just uh, throw in a, a clamp on. Uh, a sheet instead because they I'm, they do adhere very well and I did, as I mentioned in my um, genius video if you put a, because I saw some curling because it was um, adhesion issues from because the garage was cold one day I put just regular glue stick and man you're talking you know I had to spray it down with water and just let it sit for for a while for it to release. I mean, it would not come up at all. So uh, the link is out there. I'll throw it out there one more time. So if anyone wants to hop on in, by all means, hop on. So, you know, it's uh, I, like I said, it's I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I got a a Creality flex, uh, flex bed or uh, sheet, but it's, it's got the, um, I don't know, it's, it's textured, heavily textured. And I like the bottom of my prints smooth. So I never even used it. Actually, it was, you know, one of their prizes and it was shipped to me and it's just been sitting in a box. So <laughs> yeah. It's true. Wow. Oh, there we go. Uh, switch my camera over. See how this looks close up? Not me, but with this camera. Yeah, it came out pretty darn good. Auto-focusing working. Yep. Sacrifices I make. Look at that. Lead for you guys. So here's your seam right here. Or how quickly it printed. Did a great job. Love the color. And it's not blue anymore. Yeah, me. Nice. Want me to print anything else? Uh, just throw it in the chat. You know, we got some time here. Figure uh, I'm going to stream in about 45 minutes or so. I got to get Bear in here. Because, you know, he is part of the channel. But, yeah, I think it came out pretty nice. What do you guys think? Not bad, but again, this is sliced for their profile, right? So. Very quiet printer, sling bed. You know, I mean, I took me a while to get my first sling bed and uh, I'm, 
I kind of like them, but the only thing that sucks is that you got, you know, like on a workbench with limited room. So when it goes back, you know, it can hit the wall. So I do still like the cube ones. I, that's actually why I like the under five plus a lot, you know, because the bed just moves up and down. So. Mini on one printer test. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean it's I really love, you know. And um, once uh, the wife and kids see this uh, Jesse purple, eh, they're gonna they're gonna definitely want me to print out some of this stuff. So, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, I mean, it was printing darn fast. What do you guys think? It was maybe about 80 on that? You know what? Let me, uh, let me throw a benchy on there. We'll get that going. And, and then I'll post the end. We won't watch the whole thing, but uh, we'll... Uh... <laughs> well, it's been a long time since I've had this uh, talk to this guy on chat. What's up there, Llama? What's up? I was just we're all we're all like watching you, watching Liam, and hanging out in Discord all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like, oh man, you know, because I rearranged it with uh um artillery for the state. So and plus I have I really am eager for my next one. And it's not a three D printer. <laughs> so I and it's something I've been wanting for my workflow. So I'm, this is actually a video that I'm really excited to do. And I was excited for, for the Genius because I've been wanting that printer for a long time. And they sent it to me for review. And then they sent me the Hornet. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know? That one issue that I always hated about that printer. Uh, you're gonna, let me guess. You're going you're gonna to say the ribbon cables. No. The ribbon no. cables are – they actually did a halfway decent – It's yeah, I don't I, like ribbon cables, but they did a decent job on the ribbon cables. It's, yeah, the, it's I, the hot end setup. If you oh, look yeah, at you the actual hot end cooling fan, it blows okay. against the hot end, hits the motion plate, and goes straight down onto your hot block, onto your print. It's got yeah. nowhere to go with the way that housing is. Oh, on this one? Yeah. Yeah. So it goes it goes out the back, hits the, you know, does its job, cools the, the hot end, but then it goes straight down onto your print slash the heating block. Because it can't yeah. go out the back. Everyone's like, oh, it blows out the back. It can't go out the back. You got the big aluminum motion plate behind there. Well, and that's the thing is, uh, I remember with the Ender 3, people were talking about how the cooling fan blows onto your parts, you know, yeah. for, for the hot end. And yeah, but like, it doesn't because that actually has a side vent. Yeah. That can vent out know, well, side. because it's not completely sealed. Right. That one directs it literally. I mean, the shape of it and everything is funneling it right down onto your hot block. It's the only thing I don't like about that unit. So I'm in Cura. I'm just using the standard Ender 3 profile. I'm in Cura. I'm just... Exactly. Haven't, haven't you outgrown Cura yet? Yeah, I've, I've been dabbling with others. Hold on. So. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't say okay. that. I, honestly, if I screw something up in one of the other slicers, I always go back to Cura because Cura is just like... I can almost always have it work right off the bat within two minutes. Yeah, I mean, it, it does work. It works. There's a lot of people that bust on it. You know what? It works. It works fine. I think that some of their support systems can you see. <laughs> yeah, that, honestly, that's the main reason I stopped using it was because of support. Their supports are horrible. Yeah, and a lot of people are doing the whole tree supports with it, which is great. And that doesn't work well either. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've never gotten it to work. I shouldn't say it doesn't work well because I know a lot of people have gotten it to work well, but they'll outright say it. it you got to sit there and dick with it and learn it. It's not something yeah. you're going to just punch and go. No, even the small. Display. You can make it work, though, supposedly. The small display is even that bad. I was like, it's very legible. You know, so I was like. Flex plate, baby. Yeah, I know. And I, you know what? 
and I used to say, and I even said it in this video, I had the patience for it, but man, sometimes I do not. So with, with the Ender 5 I'm Plus, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very tempted now to just go flex plate completely because as, especially with, uh, if I use glue, just a glue stick, I mm. brought that in this morning with those parts on there. I had to run it under wa cold water for like 20 minutes, or not 20 minutes, but five minutes. And wait for those parts to to just pop off. What is, wait, let me uh, let me uh, resize. And it's here. not perfect because I got a bad spot right here. But that's the TH3D black crap cheap, you know, build tech wannabe, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I, I like it. I know other people have had problems, but for PLA, that's all it's really good for is PLA. But that TH3D 3D thing works like a charm. <laughs> It's it's true. Auto drop. They do let anyone in here. <laughs> Who's talking? He's here. Talk. Well, I think he's talking about you being on the stream. I, I know he is. That's why I'm, I'm trying to put it back on him, but it ain't working. <laughs> so you want to see something funny? I discovered this the other day. You know what this thing is? That looks familiar. It's a boot dryer. That's oh, you know what? You should just give me just a few more seconds. Oh, so this what does that do? Uh oh. Filament now dryer. Filament, now it's a filament dryer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm not gonna be using it as a boot dryer all summer. I might as well use it. Oh. Uh, well, you literally take your filament box. I made this a little bit smaller than I should have. Yeah, anyone know what this is? <laughs> That's a filament dryer. But you know what? Dude, these are like $29. So this is the Sunloo filament dryer that I got like a year ago. I still haven't even opened it yet. Yeah. And what do those things go for? $70, $80? Bucks? Yeah. I, I, yeah. This is $29. And like yeah, you never one reviewed them, and you you use the the box. Well, the thing is, <laughs> is with that the bottom a little bit so it can bleed air into it. And you set the box on it, you're done. Nice. S3D does not have the best parts. Idea Maker and actually Prusa Slicer now. Prusa Slicer with their paint on supports is actually pretty good. The only thing I don't like about Prusa Slicer is you cannot get rid of their stupid raft under their supports. It's such a piece of junk. And some people love that stupid raft. I freaking hate it under the supports. The supports fall off all the time. There's not enough material on the bed. If you hit the support at all with the hot end, it knocks the support off the bed. Idea Maker supports are almost the same as S3Ds, and they actually work better. <laughs> they come off better. They actually support better. I guess we got to make this just a little bit wider. But yeah, that's going to be my uh, filament dryer for the summer. The hell, I might as well use it, right? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, I elaborate. I, I haven't even been in any news cycle for a long time. So what is this? Do you know what this is? What? Thomas, was uh, uh, 25 years to seeing anyone excited to see Nate Diaz fight at no. U UFC? I don't pay attention uh, to you. I, I've, I watched a couple of fights, and that's usually or any of that. the fights that I usually watch is when I'm actually at a, like a sports bar on a weekend, and then my wife's like, "We should stop watching TV." I'm right across from you. <laughs> so, and because actually, I, I it does. It's interesting when I catch it you know, on TV. Yeah, I'm not. I don't really watch sports on TV. Never have. I don't. I like playing sports. I like stuff. I like all the stuff. It's just watching it just bores me. Like watching football. I loved playing football when I was a kid. Can't stand watching it. Boring as crap. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's my team." It's like, who cares? It's a bunch of overpaid rich millionaires freaking throwing a freaking football around. And I mean, good for them. Glad they're making money doing what they like doing. But you know. I'm not going to waste my money to make a millionaire another millionaire, you know, another million dollars. I got better things to freaking do. <laughs> and his brother. 
Okay, yeah, so. Tell you right now, don't ever buy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, sometimes she will. Okay, my wife is pretty cool, Robert. So we used to go to Tilted Kilt, and she actually enjoyed the food there. If you haven't been to Tilted Kilt, I I think it's better than a um, a Hooters. And she would say, so which girl is the the nicest one here, the cutest? And I'll tell her, and and she's like, really? (laughs) Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, so. Don't ever buy the Coex D40 TPE. Why is that? It's this stuff right here. Is that is that 85 or 95? It's 40. 40? It's 40. It's wow. D40. It is rubber bands have more structure than this stuff does. <laughs> Didn't you just open one of those? Like yeah, a minute ago. You're a almost going to right opened this an hour ago. Coke and have a rum and coke. You keep that up. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just no. might. Um, yeah, it's um the the worst part. It's not even printing it. I mean, printing it is hard. I literally, it's taken me all day to get these two little blocks out of it. I well, you printing it like high and, Huh? Are you printing at twenty millimeters a second or what? Oh, oh, slower. And I'm, u- I'm using the Omni Drop. Now you know what that Omni Drop is, right? Yeah. That, that its whole purpose and design is to print flexibles, and it was spitting the crap out the side of the extruder. That's how soft this is. It was literally worming out and getting so. Oh my god. Uh, ten millimeters a second, five millimeters starting. Ugh. It's as fast as I can go. No fan. Well, no, no retraction, and I finally got it to print. Yeah, I, I do wind up doing cooling, but I usually do it at like 30, 40 percent. Yeah, well, nor, most TPUs, TPEs, TPUs, you know, the, the crap you could buy Ninja Flex a little harder, but the, the basic crap you buy off of Amazon for 20, mm-hmm. 25 hours a roll that stuff's easy to print. You can literally print most of that stuff by taking your PLA settings and just running with it. If you have yeah. a decent, I mean, an ender, you, you're going to want to up your attraction a little, or lower your attraction a little bit. But your basic direct drive extruder, th- like, is that direct drive or is that Bowden? Uh, this is Bowden. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a unique setup for how it's, it's designed. Yeah, it's going through the inside of that wire. Yep. That's right. I remember that now. So, yeah, it's a. But something like well, that might have a hard time doing it. That thing would never be able to print this. It just wouldn't. There's so much compression. I mean, my filament path is less than an inch on that extruder, and it was compressing it like oh, uh, two inches. It's so yeah. It was, uh, I had a funky. a problem sometimes even with uh, the the um, MicroSwiss direct drive, where it would you know, just come out in between right yeah. where where the the drive is right, yeah. and I'm like, Ugh. and then. Trying to heat it up to get it out of there, right? Yeah, it's 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 a. I would have to actually heat it up to like two forty, just to get the to pull the TP. Uh, I was having to run that at two thirty five to get this to work. You know, what makes this even worse. It's made of actual like rubber, like crap. It smells like burnt freaking tires in this room now. Oh. It is nasty. I literally started printing that stupid little PLA thing this this evening. Mm-hmm. I was hoping to flush it out, you know, flush the printer uh-huh. out. Because just heating it up, that room stinks. It still smells. I can still smell it. Wow. Nasty. Nasty. Dude, I would pop that glass right off of that fucking thing. <laughs> right off of that thing. And uh, put a flex plate on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, you know, I mentioned that during my last review for the uh, Genius, and it, I really do like that printer a lot. And it's, you know, I see the attached glass. It's like, you know, I'm not a fan of using this the binder clips, but uh, actually um, there was a subscriber that sent me some really nice clips, and I've been using those on the Ender 5 Plus that, yeah, they're very low profile. Yeah, those little new ones they have, not the big. Yeah. I'm like, we binder clips? I'm like, for 100 years. 
you, you, the, the you, new little uh, itty bitty ones are really kind of nice. If you got yeah, it's uh, it's just very hooks onto the top and it's longer on the bottom. Yeah, and my, uh, my biggest problem with glass and why I stopped using it altogether, I had no. It wasn't the best. I you know I used to use regular glass, not that um, treated, coated, whatever. But uh, which I know works. I had one of those for a short time, but it works fine. But it's the weight. Yeah, it's freaking heavy, and you get a lot of Z banding, and or you print slower. Yeah, where if you get rid of that and you put a magnet bed on there with a flex plate, you can up your print speed like 15, 20 millimeters a second without and seeing an improvement in the, the edge quality. Well, I mean, it's different, like oh, with wow. the Ender 5 Plus and the Ender 5, where the bed's moving up and down. Yeah. Right? See, that's where I'd almost leave the glass. Yeah. When it's moving down, I actually, when I first built this thing, I had glass on it, and I put PEI on top of it, because I like the PEI grip better than the glass, but the glass leaves you with a like, perfectly flat surface, so... You know, but a bed slinger, I'd get rid of the glass. <laughs> yeah, it's easier said than done on this. So, oh, no. uh, it takes a hammer and a little frustration removal. So, everyone say hello in chat. So, uh, it keeps uh, Nightbot running, and we'll do next giveaway in a, a few minutes. Giveaway? What are you giving away stuff? Yeah, roll a filament. Really? I didn't yeah. even know that. How do I join that? I want to roll a filament. What kind oh, of film? Uh, I'll pick uh, um, good old uh, printed solid. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I it's way Nightbot picks you up, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure that you're – because it checks to see if you're active. So, yeah, eventually I'll do that. <laughs> the, yeah. Not that it matters. That's actually how – you know, it's funny. Uh, that's how I – got into printed solid filament the jesse filament yeah first um i mean i'd heard he was doing it but i didn't really pay attention and uh when he first started war cocky and him did a stream where he had a live stream showing how it all worked he'd only had it for like a couple of months it was really yeah i mean he would be always on Rokaki's stream at the factory doing it yeah and that's yeah, what he I did and he's like he's rolling it off and he was doing, I don't know, the blue moon color, which is fabu a fabulous color. And he goes, oh, it came out a little short. I'll tell you what, I'll give it away. And I was like, eh, you know, I'll enter a stupid giveaway like we all do not expecting. And I won. <laughs> so, it, you know, it wasn't quite a full kilogram because it, like, screwed up and he cut it off or whatever. But I won the one that he was literally extruding during the yeah. live stream. And ever yeah, since I, mean, I, I, I miss him being on those streams because it was it was cool watching him work, you know, and, and running the film. Yeah. And, you know, well, it's, I mean, it's Dave too. For yeah, all in all, he's just like there's there's no better guy for what he does. You know, he's just, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a great guy, and yeah, and and giving me crap, you know, about the giveaway, and you know, he he knew it was gonna be impossible. Oh right, you were supposed <laughs> to. Grand or something. Yeah, and like twenty two hundred subscribers in in twenty four hours. I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> not happening. So many. The frick! I've been doing YouTube for like years longer than you, and I just made five hundred last <laughs> week. <laughs> oh man, I, you know, I mean, actually, the last one the, oh, for the genius. I know why you're a nice guy, and I'm not. <laughs> Um, I, I troll back to trollers in my comments, so I'm not that nice. So, a little lot nicer than me. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I like a good troller, you know, so it's, it's a good fight. So, but, uh, no, I, you know, the last video, I actually spent a lot of time on, I actually switched software. So I went to uh, the da DaVinci Resolve and it's pretty darn nice. So, no, I'm not. Liking, I'm not a nice guy. I'm just nice to you because you're you, you're a good guy. <laughs> There's a lot of people I'm not nice to. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> so, the Benchy, the classic Benchy. You know, yeah, all actually, I, 
I didn't even check the settings. I just threw it in there. What is even the layer height? Standard layer, 0.2. Ugh. It's going to look like crap to my standards. Why? What are you doing? Everything at like 0. 0.4 or something? Uh, I mean, 0. 0.12. Yeah. See, I've been doing everything at like 0. 0.16, 0. 0.14. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. All right, so I'm just here to be a troll. What's wrong with that, man? Well, so your good be word for uh, the next giveaway is, of course, I'm nice to you, Sergio. Troll. So type in troll into the chat for uh, hold on, um, hold on. Don't type it yet. I may. Oh, I'm too early. I beat hold it. On. Everyone's typing it already now because you said it. Okay, so you can do it again. It won't matter. So just uh, type it in twice. It will only draw one uh, for one name. So it, won't oh, matter. No, no. it came up after you, so in the chat. Well, no, I'm saying uh, it's just uh, Nightbot starting to pick up. So if you typed it in before I said it, do it, do it again. That's all right. Not worried about it. <laughs> Auto drop troll 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 troll. Okay, just that one. Is, time. Will, <laughs> Nightbot will block you for that. Yep. If you do it more than like twice, it'll block you. I do think it'll allow you to do it twice now and say you've already entered, but the third yeah. time it says screw you and blocks you. Well, we gotta pay, we gotta pay homage to the trolls. Gotta pay homage to the trolls. I mean, there I, are good trolls. I, I, mean, I enjoy a good troll. I really do. I, it's, yeah. it's it's fun. I mean, it keeps it active. It keeps the comments kind of fun. You, you know, know what's actually pretty good is when I first started all of this, I used to dual stream to Twitch. And I used to get these trolls on Twitch that were like, they were like nice. You know what I mean? They just say stupid crap and they'd goof off and they'd, you know. But they weren't like rude or did porno or they would just say goofy things and then yeah. go away. <laughs> well, I mean, my my closing monologue on uh, the the um, the printer in question that everyone knows about um, is like all you did was rant about fanboys and stuff. I'm like, I told you to go away if you were a fanboy, not to listen, sure. and you listen and you watched. I got here. I got a five gallon bucket of tears that's just filling up. Now it's just for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then he replied again. I said, Oh, I just emptied it. Now it's just for you. <laughs> so, oh, what was that? Yeah. Right, we'll give it one more minute. Make sure you enter the word troll in the chat. Did you put it in there, Lama? Did you put troll in? Yeah, I did it literally like a second after you. Well, I'll do it one more time. Just make sure. That's all right. Oh, no, no, I see it. I see you in there. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's roll with it. Did, did you type troll? Oh, he did. <coughs> Vince type troll. It's for a roll of Jesse PLA there, Vince. Oh, what is going on? Okay. Everyone do me a favor. Hold on, wait. Uh, Type troll again. <laughs> hold on, no, hold on. You're supposed to. Um, uh, maker, it's U.S. only. Yeah, he won't ship to freaking. No. Sorry, buddy. Let me guess, Viking one. He yeah. won every night like three times in a I row. I know. Oh no, he's just winning up everything. I wish we could find <laughs> it. Okay, I'm going to re-roll it. Thanks, Sean. Oh, there we go. J5WE3D, are you U.S.? <laughs> Maker Viking. I know. I'm trolling. We got to get him a roll. Did you ever get one? Did, did anyone ever send you a roll there, Viking? I know we were talking about sending our roll somehow or another, like shooting it down to. All right. So J five W, go on to my uh, about section on my YouTube. My uh, 
uh, email address is in there. This is for a role of Jesse PLA. You can work with me to go ahead and get that shipped to you. So pick a role in there. It's $19. And let me make sure that is in their inventory because their inventory fluctuates a lot. So yeah. like that orange, that went off the shelves fast. Which I forget one? what the name. It was a special orange filament. It hasn't been a bag. Oh, the Ben's orange or Brad orange? Yeah. He's got that back in stock. It was just back recently. I was looking at it. I like the mystery orange. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was mystery orange. That's all mystery. Well, you can't see it because I got the light off in there, but that thing's all mystery orange. Nah. The whole we'll, be, we'll be doing one more giveaway. Of Jesse yeah. PLA mystery orange. <laughs> so again. Oh, printer. All that orange is Jesse PLA mystery. Uh, yeah, this is uh, here. Tell you what, let me. Uh, yeah, it is quiet, so let me put my mic over next to it. I was gonna say Josh's stuff. Yeah. Oh, the night wore red. I wanted some of that too. I don't think Josh is gonna do filament anymore. It wasn't wasn't worth it to him. I don't think. Yeah. So th this thing is really quiet. I mean, it's it's nice. Yeah, it's got twenty two oh nines in it, doesn't it? I think it's 2208s, not nines, because it's got uh, limit switches. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the only difference is if you use limit switches or not. So, Well, 2209s, you, I, I got 2209s. I still use limit switches. I still won't get rid of the limit switches. I wouldn't either. I, You know what? What? How to make your freaking print, you know, shift in the middle of your print? Here, uh, let me... Uh, Throw Jesse filaments in here. Set it up for limitless switches. It's solid. Or centerless homing. So, no, so printed solid is the filament I use as my primary now. You just started yeah. buying that like yep. a month ago. <laughs> yeah. I said, okay, let me uh, see what it's all about. And I've been hooked ever since. The colors are just yeah. amazing. That's what this is. I just printed. This is slime green, Jesse PLA. Yeah. It's actually got like sparkles in it. It's it's like semi glitter, but he doesn't like. He's not like protopasta where it's like ninety percent glitter and ten percent PLA. <laughs> it's like ninety percent PLA and ten percent glitter. You really kind of have to look at it, but it gives it kind of a weird silky look when you're looking at it. It's I like it. I like all of this film. It's yeah, I mean it's uh, mystery orange. Down there, I'm like, let's you know, because I'm a plain printing type. Because some stuff is like I don't really care what the color is. Yeah. But it definitely now I can see the you know the appeal because these colors are just so vibrant. You know, I mean they're just are and some of them are. I've got yeah, a couple of them I've been a little disappointed in. They're kind really. of hazy. But again, you're paying 19 bucks for it. Yeah, I mean, it's a... I love the blue moon. I love the mystery orange. And yeah, that orange looks amazing. So this is the cyan. Yeah. That looks pretty nice. Yeah. This like was... The, um, I'm your mauve or whatever. That one's a little... I like it. It's nice, but it's a little, like, hazy, kind of creamy. It's not mm -hmm. as vivid as his other colors. I love yeah. his ice colors. I just got his like ice red. Never had it before. I got it, I don't know, a couple months ago. My God, is that gorgeous. The two uh, or three, I think he's got three ice colors. The ice blue, ice red, and I think he's got an ice violet or maroon or something. I haven't tried the other two, but that ice red is gorgeous. Yeah, that's something I would... uh and it's 20 bucks. I all the time, dude. You know how you got to hit $50 to order from him to get free shipping? If you order two regular rolls and then one mystery roll, you hit your $50. Oh, yeah. And the mystery roll is 15 bucks. Because it's, you know, it's runoff, it's whatever, it's color changing because he, you know, 
He was yeah, running so, black and he went to white, and it's you know instead of shutting the machine down and cleaning it, he's he's better off just letting it. I mean, that's what's great about it. And sell it at half the price. It's the runoffs. It's it's a great yeah. idea. You know yeah, why so, waste the film it, right? A lot of companies are doing it. Well, the thing is, is there's two ways to do it. There's clean the machine. In other words, you yeah, shut yeah. it down, you oh, clean so. it out, and scrub the last color out, and put the next color in. The, wait, so Bubba's saying I didn't. Okay, again, I stay out. I, I'm a person that will watch the news cycle maybe once or twice a week, just to get caught up on topics. But I did not know that <coughs> uh, that the border is closed. Yeah, the Canadian border's been closed since COVID hit. It's been closed for a year. <laughs> no, why? Well, I mean, I thought they were letting some traffic through. Oh, they're letting some very little like necessities go either or. You know, demand, you know, trade and demand, whatever, supply and demand. But no, <clears throat> you, you cannot cross the border. You can't drive up to the border and go into Canada right now. You haven't been able to for a year. Wow. Since COVID hit, Canada shut down the border before anybody else did anything here in the States. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I think they I, I, I knew that February last year. Canadians would just drive over to get goods and go right back, you know? So. Well, normally they could. Yeah. The southern yeah. border is closed, too. They just keep walking across. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which we're not going to get into that whole political. Nightmare. No, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I'll stay away from that, but. I, I, I get it. So, um, I get it both sides of the story. Yeah, that's my problem. I, I don't. Whatever. Yep. And that's the uh, you know me. I tried to veer off of anything. Yeah. This is only for oh, oh, I have my own views, and they stay the away from this channel. <laughs> so I tried to be Discord and discuss that where it's yep. like, you know, but um, it's uh, but let's see here. It's uh, this bench is coming out pretty darn nice so far. Yeah, uh, it actually looks like it's pretty all right. Yeah. How'd that little block thing come out? That came out pretty decent, right? Yeah, it came out came Stupid. out very well. Yeah, I mean it's you know, I mean it would be nice if they gave you another another test, but it's always worth testing, you know, what they provide, right? Wait a minute, was the emblem on the bed? No, it was the top. Oh. It almost looks like it was better. It's gonna say, damn, that's good bridging inside there. Even if it's a it's not like it's a real good uh, long span. Um, no, but still, you still get that kind of stringy look. So this was bridged, but it's it's closer. Yeah, that's not even really bridging. That's just yeah, it's playing hopscotch over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it. It's um, it's doing quite well, and we'll do the last giveaway in like five, ten more minutes, and then we'll. In the stream here, but I'll try to get Bear in here. So, how okay. bad did I screw this up? I might as well redesign this metal one sitting here. I guess but I so measured the box wrong. <laughs> um, so far, I'm you know I'm happy with the printer. You know, it's a uh, it's a great printer. It's I like that it's actually pretty compact. Um, it was definitely the easiest. Pass through the extruder I've had. I have uh, any printer that I've oh, Period. It, it the filament went right through, no problem. Um, very fast to build. It took longer to take the darn uh, film off the front. So then, and leveling the bed, the nine points. Um, just skip it and do the four points. Uh, the nine points was absolutely ridiculous. For yeah, the nine points of manual leveling. Could you imagine that? Nine points of manual leveling. Yeah. Why glass? You should only have to do like two. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's a uh, left and right, front and back, four. You shouldn't even be doing it with glass over the screws. You should be doing it in a center. Later, Travis. Them. Well, I mean, think about how long that would take to level nine points manually. <laughs> no, I gave up. So you you weren't on the stream while I was trying that. I was like, nope, I. I after like five minutes, I gave up and uh, 
I did the four typical four points. So yeah. I skipped over them. And Why would they have you do nine points with the glass? Well, it makes no sense. So the the CR6 SE has twice as many, I think. Um, I don't re really remember, but and yeah, the you know this, uh, manual, under right? five. Is it? Someone help me out here. How many is under under five? Two, three. I did do twenty one. Is it nine or twelve? Oh, I did twenty one and then extruded in, didn't I? I did, you dummy. <laughs> That's what I did wrong. Yeah, I could like I said, I could hear my Ender uh, five plus because it's got the five hundred watt meanwhile in there over this printer. Negative two point four. That fixes that. I actually I'm gonna go a little yeah, bit. Yeah, nine times. That's what I thought it was nine times because I was trying to it was I I was like nine or twelve. So and uh David, I'm gonna get to your question about that filament runout. I did see it the email. I just haven't had time to reply. <sighs> you know, I'm, it's been a while since I've had my machine stock and everyone knows that. It hasn't been stocked since the second month that I've owned it. Um but with the filament run out, you should just be able to jump the pins and see if it triggers, right? Because it's just a limit switch in there. And uh, and see if it stops. So, I mean, if, if he has an active light, because he said that he put in a... Uh, so anyone that doesn't... And no one knows this conversation. So David sent me an email about uh, a person that's having a problem with uh, their limit switch on their under 5 plus or for their filament run out. Um, yeah. yeah, you've been modding yours before I even started mine, David. So um, his, his uh, limit switch has never worked. So it's just a limit switch with a roller on it. So it it's a, it's very simple. It's either it could be a break in the wire, it could be the limit switch. So you take it apart, you just jump the wire, you know, jump the, the two pins and see if it, it triggers. So, and it says, you know, that the you know, the film just ran out. So I think it should be that easy. But having someone break open a case as a regular user of a machine like this, I'm always, it's so difficult for me to tell someone to do that because, you know, I'm used to warranties and stuff where you bring it back to a manufacturer and they fix it. Not, not this type of thing that we all deal with, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, manufacturers expect you to open it and and help solve it. Well, when they give you a review unit, they do. Yeah. <laughs> so they do. I mean, they expect you to tear it apart and, and look inside, and if they don't, they're not too bright. <laughs> so, uh, to me, that's a limit switch is probably the easiest thing. And you know what? What they can do is uh, cannibalize one off their end stops right so and just plug one in and see if you just tap it and see if it works you know just take one from one hit the switch 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 out the wires plug it in from from the you know if the, the connector is the same you take it from the end stop from your x or or your y or your z switch it with the limit from your filament run out and see if it triggers it right it should be that easy, as long as it has the same connector. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, you're a little late. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, Bubba, uh, he, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, David, he put that in the email that he did the, the checks. I think he did. Or did he not? So uh, I'll, David and I will go back through the email and check. So yeah, use Pronter Face and and do it. So we'll do the last giveaway in five more minutes. <laughs> you got one more. Oh wait, you're Canada. <laughs> Sorry to. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He used the filament to check. Okay. Yeah. I remember reading the that he, he used to put it in there. And, you know, people in the communities, they were like, 
well, if the limit switch or if the filament run out doesn't work, I just throw a piece of film in and bypass it. Like, what's the point of having a filament run out sensor then? So, <laughs> hey, but at least I helped you with your giveaway. So, Bot should get his, uh, Robert should get his sometime this week. Nice. Yeah, David's, uh, you still running the Omni Drops there, David? Yes, he is. Yeah, I mean, his machines are beasts. I, I honestly all think I'm. All Omni Drops now. You know, yeah? All right, all I use for an extruder. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm basically, I haven't revisited my Ender 5 Plus except for printing, and I think I'm just done with it, uh, with the upgrades. I'm satisfied with all, I can print any material, and that's basically the way I wanted it. So it's reliable. I am going to have to try that, but I really don't want to stink up the garage because that's where I work for my main job. It, so. it freaking stinks. <laughs> it, it smells like somebody took a car and sat there and did a burnout on your garage floor for like 25 minutes. That's oh. how bad it smells. That's horrible. It's actually even worse. You know what it actually smells like? It's worse than a burnout. It smells like somebody took a tire and threw it in a freaking fire while you're at a keg party. Yeah. That's what it smells like. I'm not kidding. It's that nasty. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw like that bluish, nasty black smoke coming off the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is gnarly. Dude, it, it's like, well, it's 50 degrees out, but it, it was not warm today, and I had all my windows open and a fan going. Because I had to freaking get that stink out of the room. It's bad. It still stinks. Here, can you can you video smell? <laughs> <laughs> but how's it here? Let me zoom you in. No, how? Ooh, that is pretty nasty looking. It's not great, but at least it didn't jam, dude. It was jamming the Omnia drops. It's so flexible. And Dave will tell you that's like literally nearly impossible to do. <laughs> to jam the Omni Drop, you really have to like. And it was jam it wasn't just jamming it; it was spitting it out the side of the thing. Well, yeah, but it, 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 that little gap, right, right where your shooter is. No that's just it. There's no gap, dude. The Omni Drop, the way it's molded, it's molded around the the extruder gears, and they're at a pitch. It was literally taking and binding up and expanding the spring and just oh, spitting it out. Uh, so what, hey, uh, do, uh, Tim, which printer is this? Yeah, ABS, I, I had it in the enclosure and when I opened it, I just let it fume out. You know, I just left a room for a while, you know, from the garage. A ABS, I mean, again, it's my bedroom. I don't want to run it. That's why I don't run ABS anymore. But ABS isn't that bad. You don't want to do it in a closed room. You don't want to sleep in it. My yeah. bedroom. But, you know, this is worse. This is 10 million times worse than ABS. This smells like somebody threw a freaking tire in the fire and just left it smoldering in your room. It's nasty. Yeah, I know he is. I was actually talking to Max this morning about this. We were going how I was going to get this to work. Uh, so Maker's Hub, I, as long as the, you know, the PTFE tube holds up, I'm fine with it. I think it's a unique design. Um, it's something, you know what? It's in this space, it's hard to stand out, you know, because everyone says, Oh, yeah, it's just another clone, right? And that's all you hear. It's another clone of the Ender 3. It's the same build volume. Well, yeah, it kind of is, you know, I mean, that's just the way it is, right? So, I mean, it's a, uh, um, I'll definitely have an improvement. I already see some of the things that could be approved on, and on that's with my next video that's coming out, it's a segue into this, into the improvements. So, I I like and dislike the hot end connection. I I like the idea of it, the yeah. way it went, 
Like, I don't like some of the regular ribbon cables, not because of the ribbon cable itself is a problem, but the <laughs> attachment, as we all know, with, like, the the uh, um, sidewinder and all of those. Um, so, uh, so what so, you missed, uh, MP, um, is that the whole hot end assembly, or not hot end, but the... Uh, yeah, the so, whole hot end assembly screws into that. Yeah, so this, connection. this has a PTFD tubing inside. And picture, if you ever seen a microphone, Jack. It, it's I, as soon as I saw it, I said, wow, that's like a microphone pins, right? Keyed with a PTFE tube right down the center. Yeah. See, there's that's the, what it reminds the, me of. I, I like the way it attaches. I dislike it in the sense that it's you're never going to be able to really do any kind of modding to your hot end because of it. Yeah, it's I mean, so really hard to do any kind of upgrades. Or and uh, you know, uh, in, in a video, not the next one. That's just a review of this for this printer. It's a review and follow up. I already, I already see some potential for upgrades that hopefully I could release to, for other people to do. So um, cheap, very cheap, just basically printing them out. Um, but I would like to tear, do a teardown of the inside of it. See what that, that whole, you know, nozzle looks like, you know, the whole hot end. Well, it's it's a Creality hot end with the two angled. Yeah. I've seen it. The no, I don't think it's very Creality possible. that everybody, you know, knocks off. It may not be the exact same thing, but it's that general design of the Creality hot end. But instead of having the one fan that, you know, comes down with a duck, they just took the two fans and pitched them, so they yeah. don't need like any real duct work. <laughs> it just shoots down at the nozzle, which is good. I, I don't mind the fans and stuff. The only thing I don't like is the way they have the hot end fan blowing on it, hitting that black motion plate, and then the only place for it to go is down onto the hot end. You know, your your heater block is getting cooled. <laughs> By the fan instead of just the, you know, heat break. Well, so, and that's the thing is, right, it, with uh, being customizable, is that uh, you're almost like looking for the, a stockish reality type printer that's very popular, right? You know, with the same yeah. type of hot end that they've been what using for years. Are. So, yeah, and, you know, there's two for? communities. You know, what's that? How much does that thing go for? It goes for it's like, like two fifty, right? two yeah, two eighty, like two eighty. Oh, is that much? I didn't think it was that much. But you know, I mean, if we take a look, well, it's got the better board. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a lot of upgrades here in comparison to a stock. Oh, it's taller than the, than an Ender too, isn't it? So the genius is the one on the left that I just reviewed. And the and then you have the Hornet. I like that they went to a full SD card. Yes. I like you still got a knob. I can't I think touch screens are a waste and they're a pain in the ass. Yeah, you know, with the with the genius, you know, it's it's limited, like I said, but it's definitely the it, one of the most responsive touch screens I've ever used. Yeah, but so, still, when you go to do anything, it's like, okay, I got to turn my temperature up to two sixty. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's either you got the Probably one or the ten. In the knob. So yeah, but it defaults to like one ninety when you turn it on. So at yeah. least with the with the genius, that's the way that works. Okay, to get it up to two ten, you're still going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. 12, 12, 12 well, you you, you switch 12, it to 12, increments of ten, and then twenty. Yeah, it's close. still. I mean, it's just kind of. Yeah. yeah, I know. I, I get it. You know, but you know, I I like both. I like having the the touch screen and, and you know the or the click wheel, but it's just amazing is that they can never put all the functionality with all the features for click wheel into a touch screen. I don't understand why. So 
Well, that's the one thing I always liked about the the like the big tree tech that does either or. Yeah, I kind of like that thing. Yeah, that's. Have a, you ever seen that? The big yeah, tree tech my, has one where you can switch back and forth. Yeah, I did that in my uh, Ender Five Plus video, the ultimate upgrade. Oh right, I remember that. Yeah, no, it's it's a good screen. They got a new one too that I kind of like. I don't know if it's any better. I think it's just a full graphics display, but it's got like the backlit LED and everything. <laughs> it just looks cool. It's only like fifteen bucks. I've been thinking about getting one just because they're stupidly simple, but they're colored. I'd like to get a purple one for this. I have uh, two of their five-inch displays that I haven't even used yet. So, I you know it's a, you know, I got so many other projects I have to work on, and um, I got. Something. I'm a knob fan. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm a knob fan too. You know what? I, the screen to me, I always use. Well, I'm actually, I'm going back to Repetier. I, I played with Octoprint and then I went to Repetier. They went back to Octoprint to say, okay, maybe it was just Repetier is better, but we won't get into that now. But uh, the screen to me is just like, so I could do this. Okay, it's running. And then. Yeah, I, I mean. mean I never really use it on the machine. I, I just want the information there. And this, this screen on here, it's small, but it's absolutely legible. I mean, it's very crisp. It's it's vibrant. and uh, I think that's the same thing as the big tree tech. <laughs> Can't that knob glow like a color on the Genius? Or no, on that. Doesn't that knob glow? Can't you set the knob to like light up? Ah, uh, you know what? Let me take a look. Uh, Let's get the big kind of goofy looking knob, right? Yeah, let me. Uh... I think you'll find that knob glows. You can turn the lights on and crap with that thing. Because there's a light in the head or something too, isn't there on that one? No, this one doesn't have it. No. The the genius has a, a changing LED with by the hot end that yep. as it's coming up it'll change it. So, yeah, I thought that had the LED ring on the nozzle too. Yeah. No, I know what you're talking about because uh, Big Tree Tech has that. Yeah, yeah, and they got one that the knob glows. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like the clone now. I just think yeah, it's, a, it, it's absolutely it, pointless. It doesn't do anything for the printer. It just looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, that Benchy is not looking terrible. I mean, I can see no. some banding in it and everything, but come on, it's not like you tune the, the slicer profile or anything. You just literally. Oh, like, I didn't change anything. Go, I right? just threw it in there. Yeah. You know? I mean, you didn't even start with like a, a an Ender profile or anything, right? You just. No, oh, I just I, I grabbed the Ender 3 profile right off of. I did not change. I just threw the model on there and printed it. And you know what? Yeah. I never do that. That is usually I look at I go through dig through all the settings. I'm like, no, I don't like the retraction. I I just I didn't that's, do any. That's actually things. a good thing with a printer like that because I mean that thing's again it, it's another Ender three clone blah blah blah. But that's actually good. Take the Ender three profile, run one. Don't touch a damn thing. Yep. Look at it and then you can say okay. This needs to change. That needs to change. You know, this is obvious. My retraction's too much or too little, you know. And then you just, you, you know how to tweak it a little better. Because I actually use the, I usually take the CR-10 for the, the big pumpkin, even though it's an A-net that's not even close to an A-net anymore. I use the CR-10 profile. And if, whenever I'm doing, like, a new slicer or anything or a new profile... I just run it with the CR10 as is, yep. for, the, for the film it is or whatever, and uh, go from there. Because that first print will tell you what's wrong. You know, it's a nice purple filament. Is that Jesse filament too? Yeah, it's Jesse. It's, uh, I don't it's, I've seen that. it's called Purple Eater. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, so that camera. The the Canon is actually picking up the the color better than this, the true color of the filament. So yeah, the, it's like a lavendery 
Yes. So. Cool. <laughs> it's no problem. <laughs> I do like that connector. I just, I see problems with it. I like the concept. I just, for one, if you ever have a problem like that one, I'm assuming that the PTFE tube goes all the way to the hot end. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. It's, 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 it's got its own, um, they, they give you a, a spare for the hot end. Oh, so it stops right at that junction? Yep. Ah, that's not a bad thing. No. But no still, if anything goes wrong, you're stuck with that connector. But again, it's it's the way I look at it. I I get you what what you're saying. Yeah, and no, I agree. And but I like the idea that someone a company is actually doing something different than what other people are doing. Yeah. Well, someone who uh, wasn't it two trees was using the HDMI cable to do the same thing. Yeah. 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 They're using a standard HDMI um, to run off everything, which, which is, I don't like as well. And for a simple fact, and why I like that. That screws on. Mm -hmm. it holds it. HDMI cable plugs in and wobbles around, and eventually it's going to break loose. That's yeah. freaking screwed on, held in place. It's it. That junction is the least likely spot to break now. Well, and I like that this is like a literally a nice flexible rubber around yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so it, it's it just uh, it, it it screams better quality than having um. Um, just a regular mess, right? Yeah, or the but, nightmare I have. <laughs> and that's you know, I you know, I some people aren't fans of the ribbon cables. I am. I'm a huge fan of them. You know, because I like neatness and tidiness. I like uh, the attention to detail. You know, so yeah. the, the and problem I, with you know, ribbon cables one, they're not uh, they're not made to move. They're made to be. Yeah. Moved, flexed into place, and then stay. Well, made to be constantly moving. And everyone's like, oh, well, look at your regular inkjet printer. Inkjet printers don't use a ribbon cable, they use mylar cables. Different. <laughs> My, if they did a mylar cable, that would be freaking awesome. You know what I'm talking about? A mylar cable, right? Yeah, I know what mylar is. You know, so. Yeah, well, your 3D printer, I mean, your regular like inkjet 2D printer. Has a mylar cable. It's mylar with with copper impregnated on it. That's super flexible and never going to break. Yeah, the regular ribbon cable isn't made to continually flex. It's made to be flexible to bend into shape and then stay. It's not made to be repeatedly flexed. All and right, you're always so, going to break. All right. So Jordan just replied to his win. So I was waiting for that to happen. So. Let's uh, get this third one in. So let me uh, reset Nightbot here ahead of time. It just started dumping outside again. Did it? Where are you oh, living in? Freaking pouring out now, Connecticut. Way west of you. Or east of you, excuse me. Because you're like out in Midland country, right? I think I'm actually closer to Viking than I am to you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, literally, I think mileage-wise, if I didn't have to cross the ocean, I think I might actually be closer to Viking than I am to you. <sighs> actually, I, I doubt it. So first, everyone... There's a lot say... of motion between me and him, but... Does everyone say bear for uh, just to make sure that Nightbot is picking yeah, you up as an active person? You're like two hours ahead of me, uh, Sergio. Yeah. That's all. Bear? Bear. Where is Bear? In the house? I'm, I'm actually going to tell the wife to bring him in here. Hey, why won't it type? Yeah, you're about two, three hours ahead of me in the weather pattern, if it's coming up the coast. You actually didn't get any of this, did you? No, this no. It actually oh. was a very pleasant day. No, um, Sergio. Sergio um, only lives like, I mean, he's like six, eight hours away from me of that. 
just he's just down the coast. Uh, a bear, the same bear is only to make sure that Nightbot's picking you up as an active user. So that way, I could uh, do a real keyword for the for the next giveaway. It was kind of nice here today, but they said tonight we're actually supposed to get snow tonight. Oh wow! This is supposed to turn into snow overnight. They pretty much said nothing. If you get anything to stick, it won't last because hey, the ground's been too warm too long. We've had like 60, 70 degree days for like the last week. So the ground's not cold enough for it. <laughs> but we're supposed to get snow tonight. Come here, buddy. Sure is drop. Still 50 degrees out. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Did it rain all day? See, we were actually kind of nice all day. I thought this this was coming from out west, not up the coast. Uh, hey, Bear, come here. Come here. Come here, Bear. Come here, buddy. Come here, come here puppy. Oh, I'm ready for bed. I'm an old man. That's a take a look at Bear. With the dog. Hey, Hi there, dog. buddy. With the dog. He's, give me a hug. Can you give me a hug? Give me a hug. Oh, oh. Oh, let's uh, give her a yellow eyes there for a second there. Oh, by the way, Dave Wilson. There you go. These things are pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. oh here. here. Hold on. Here go. These things can do you see these things? How you doing, buddy? Dave gave me. He's taking care of you in there. I think he sent some to Dan too. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Up oh, that box there is the next video. I better remove it. What is it? Come yeah, on, give that's, me. that's a surprise. No so, surprises. There's yeah. no surprises in life. <laughs> yeah. There's too many yeah, surprises in life. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now now he wants to go back in there. What a chump. He's in here all day while I'm working for work, and then he goes, he's pushing on the door to go back into the living room. Because he's smart. It's warmer in there. It's nicer. Yeah. And mom's in there and probably dog treats. <laughs> oh, well, his pillow has the box on it. <laughs> all right. So what are we going to do for this giveaway? Mm -hmm. Hornet. Didn't we do this only? If you won, you don't get another win. So, didn't you just do bear? No, bear was to make sure that everyone was active because I oh. wants to see active users. So, oh, yeah. someday I'll do the wheel of shame, but. I'm kind of not a fan of it because you get people that just throw their names in there and sometimes they don't put their YouTube name and stuff or throw yeah. it in or I put you know. this though and it doesn't this isn't always fully active. And I think yeah. you've got it where you're making people like type bear or whatever beforehand. Yeah. Because if you're not active, it won't connect you if nope. you haven't said something in the last like 15 minutes, it'll assume you're not there anymore. It won't put you in the list, yeah. but I think, like, like I said, what you're doing by having somebody, everybody say something beforehand, it's fixing that issue. Yeah, again, this is for U.S. only. So if you won again, you can't win again. So, and this one's coming from me. So the other two were from Printed Solid. So this is uh, from me for Printed Solid. So it's like one million dollars of printed solid. <laughs> yeah. So in, in two minutes, so we'll we'll let this run for like a minute or two, and then we'll run the nightbot. And that's one thing I do like about nightbots that. And the thing I, I just see some complications with the wheel, right? People throw in so many different accounts in there, so. But I do the wheel is simple. I and people can see it run, but Nightbot, I just hit the keyword and it just picks random. So I don't have to like pre-spin the wheel or randomize it and stuff. So 
I don't know if you remember, but he was all <laughs> talking about over Christmas and New Year's that week off that by the end of New Year's, he was going to have PETG running on his line. Oh, really? He never did. Yeah, because he bought like, you never saw that? No. His biggest problem with PETG on the line he got is PETG is more hydroscopic, I guess, or whatever. And you have to like super dry it before you put it in the extruder. And you need a special like tumbler. You can't just like heat it up like we do in these. You got to tumble it or something. I don't know. But he bought this like $5,000 machine to do it. He like posted it like the day before Christmas. Like, this is what I'm going to be playing with over the next week. You know, hopefully we'll have PETG by you know the week after New Year's. And haven't heard a word since. <laughs> well, complications, <laughs> right? So that's why you never announce something until you know it's actually running and it's working. So yeah. I mean, it's you know, well, I mean, we've all been harassing them yeah. to do it. Yeah. To be all quite right. honest, I, I'm kind of glad he's not. Because if he starts doing PETG, he's having a hard enough time keeping up with his PLA line. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine he adds, you know, another 32 colors of a completely <laughs> different material? Yeah, I, I want to try the Atomic. So that's my next order from him is the Atomic. So The what? Atomic filament. Oh, why would you order Atomic from him? Just get well, Atomic. Well... Let's just to do it. All yeah, right. I, so I like it. Sure. Yeah, I guess. If it's the same price, give Dave an extra buck or two. Yep, that's why. So all right. So I'm gonna roll a hornet. So everyone in. <sighs> okay. All right. And Nightbot already took off the people that already ran. One. Oh, what was it Viking? <laughs> nope, not Viking. I made sure that he was. Um, yep. He's from like Wisconsin or something, isn't he? Or Ohio or something. All right, three D Maker Hub. Nice job. Or Canada? Nope. Is he in Canada? I he better not be. I said no. It's U.S. only. So, are you in Canada or U.S. U.S. only 3D Maker Hub? Is he even still here? He's got to be here. Or he wouldn't have picked. Well, he, he said something about subscribing the last time. So he is Florida. He's a Floridian. Nice. So go on to my YouTube. Go on to the about. Unhide my uh, um, email. Shoot me an email with your address. Go on to printasolid.com. Pick, uh, pick out a color that's of Jesse PLA for $19. Let me know which one that you're looking for, and we'll get shipped out to you. But nice. So we'll go ahead and end this stream in a few minutes. Um, and then uh, give everyone their rest of their evening. So Purple Benchy. Yeah, it's actually come out. Yeah, it's, I mean, it doesn't nice. look perfect, but it doesn't. No, look I mean, it's a, you know, again, it's not <laughs> for a drag and drop on a stock Ender yeah. Three profile on Cura. It's looking pretty damn good. No, so. it, it actually is. I've seen a few of those, and like I said, the only thing that that bothers me about that is that yellow shape of the hot end and the way yeah. it funnels the air down. I think it looks cool, and that's why they did it. Obviously, yeah, you know. It looks like you, you got. It. it looks like Transformers. I mean, yeah. you, you know that's why they did it. I mean, it just looks like a Transformer symbol, but it funnels the air down onto your hot box. Yeah. Why would you send it to me? Because you got too much already. <laughs> hey, Sergio's a great guy. So. Oh, he is. He bought me a bunch of freaking atomic filament. He needed some part made for his printer that he wanted to customize and I'm like okay it took me like you know an hour if that he's like oh here you go and freaking next thing I know I get a big box of atomic film and all the carbon fiber -y stuff I was like cool it was worth it <laughs> you know one thing I'm not hearing on here that you know I hear on a couple 
the printers I review is I don't hear any collisions, right? So when the bed's not leveled or imperfections, you know, it's over. just gliding right over, you know, the infills, right? It's just, yeah. you know, the, the problem is, is the where it spans on the arch is the key if it's going to knock it off or not. So, but we're a ways away from that. So. How loud are those fans? I mean, I can't hear them through your mic, so they can't be no, that here. loud. I'll, I'll... They actually sound kind of quiet. Right on. Can't hear it. No, it's like I said, I hear my Ender 5 Plus over this thing. It is so quiet. Is it actually throwing any air? <laughs> Yeah, it's throwing air. I mean, I do, uh, you know, I do like that it has dual cooling. Yeah. Right? It just, th just hear me out that oh, a lot of manufacturers only have it on one end, whether it works or not, right? That's what I'm trying to say is that it has it. Uh, yes. Yeah, it don't look like the worst Ender 5 clone in her three clone whatever it is all right so i got i got jordan's i got keith and i got 3d maker daniel i got all three of your emails thank you for doing that so i may ask for your phone number because printed solid for delivery confirmation it's it's the service that they use for delivery that's why i also just say send my the email privately to me so that way it's so it's just oh, way it is. Blast it up right here in chat so we can all copy <laughs> it and just spam for the rest of well, I had life. one person on a previous, why do you need it? I said, I cannot fill out the form without it. So, so two of you will be, you know, we'll be dealing with a uh, printed solid. They'll just send it to you or I'll just give them the, your, the address and one will be from me. So most likely be, um, Victor uh, in Florida, too. Yeah, so Daniel, I'll be sending you, and me and you will work it out to send it. So, there's a lot of things. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I can't really just make, you know, my voice isn't that soothing. You know, no, I want your phone number. <laughs> I, can, I can sell it to all the spam caller guys and make <laughs> I don't know if I want to try that number. Call you about <laughs> car warranty. Oh my gosh! When when we had pagers and stuff back in the day, I used to do the Empire Carpet number to people. Oh God! <laughs> I, in the Midwest, we had the Empire five eight 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 two three hundred. Yep. <laughs> and I would just do like a six three zero or so of their area code. Oh my like, man! Because people are like I know that number. You know, because they don't even think yeah, about the yep. commercial. I know, and they're like they're nationwide Empire Carpet. They're everywhere. We got them here. Yeah. yeah so, it, and that's the thing is that people just like I know that number, so I know that person, and they would just call it. <laughs> so it's oh, pretty God. hilarious. You remember the old Sprint push to talk, and it would chirp. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The next tell. Yeah. The next tells. Well, we were all Sprint here. Nextel, yeah. we, there was no Nextel around here. It was all Sprint. Same thing, though. But uh, everyone in construction had them, you know, because it was like it saved you money. Instead of making a yeah. cell phone call back when you paid per minute, you know, you could do the push to talk, and it was free if you were in range. Mm -hmm. Well, you always get the jerk that waits until you're up on a ladder. We used to do it deliberately sometimes. Like, you're up siding or something. We'd, like, watch him go up to the ladder, get some tools out, and then start clicking that damn thing. Just being like, call John, call John, call John, call John, call John. <laughs> and their phones at me going, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> trying to work. And they're like, screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing more annoying than that sound those things made. Yeah, sorry they're old. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like we here in the Midwest would have the Victory Auto Wreckers and the Empire Carpet. Eagle Man and a whole bunch of weird ones, you know, that we'd have yeah. to deal with. You don't even watch TV here in the Midwest uh, at during the day because 
uh, you know, the commercials are either you need car insurance, you need a, um, a lawyer, or you need um, to find a way to pay for things after you die. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm dead. I got to pay some bills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is really, uh, we didn't do this mind so much. You know what we used to do? That I don't know how am I going to describe this without being rude? Toward, toward the mid 90s and the early 2000s, you get the kids you hire that you know all wear their pants with the underwear showing and their pants are down around their yeah, you know, below their crotch. Well, you get up on a roof for one, you can't move it's not safe but you every once in a while you get them and you get the plumber's crack that goes beyond the plumber's crack so you start taking nails and you insert it <laughs> yeah. and watch them jump like sky freaking high well that, Kyle, that, that, like in the good old you know six penny enema <laughs> Kyle, the machine the machine's working great i mean as right now i have no complaints about it you know um i'll be doing a full review in probably like two weeks because i have um i try to keep things in line as i receive them i don't like jumping items so i did receive an item before this so i did ask how they wanted me to for uh artillery and they wanted a live stream and a review so yeah um this way, you know, they couldn't see everything works out of the box as it should. Um, and if, so they could also improve on anything that's needed. So, um, yeah, everything's have, running great on it. Do you so have far. another, like, stock ender or similar? No, I do not. But I, Other than I'm the, thinking about getting a V2 because I need to get the chameleon built. Because here's the thing that I'm noticing about that that I actually like. Most of the enders, if you look at them, they have the belt go up and over the top of that 2020 inside the yeah. channel and then come back down at the bottom. The problem is, is they're pitching that belt to get it so yeah. you can clip it on. And I don't know if you know the whole geometry thing, but it actually throws your geometry out. If you go, when you're in the middle, if you print a 2020 cube, you'll get a 2020 cube. But if you go to either edge and you print a 2020 cube, It'll actually shrink it or expand it depending on how the belt's pulling. So you get like 2020 on the bed, but you may end up with like 19.5 on the X. Yeah. That won't do it because they didn't do that. They ran that bottom belt down again so yep. it's nice and flat. And yeah, that's a big thing that you know no one ever points out. But if you take an ender and you print a 2020 cube in the middle. And then you know, get it so it's actually reading twenty 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 or close. And then print one out on the very edge of the bed along the X. You'll get a different width, guarantee it. I mean, it won't be a lot. You're only talking maybe point one difference, but there's a difference. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's nice to see that it's not going over, like you said. And you know what? I didn't even think about that. So yeah, the mat, the mat, the print is going great. I don't hear, I mean, it, I don't hear anything happening, which is even better, you know, having a printer that's silent. Uh, you know, when I first got the Ender 5 Plus, I didn't really even know that there was silent. I, I just, well, the thing is, is I grew up around machinery all the time. And yeah. I kind of liked the sound because it was like, it sounds like something's working in the garage, you know? But then two rooms over, you can still hear it. Sure. And then it was like, Oh wait, they do make silent things for them, and uh, oh, um, so yeah, it's, it's it's nice having something quiet like the A net uh, A A five. Uh, that thing is loud, so you it's as it. loud as Ender five plus was before I put the silent board in there. But it it's it, it's enough to where you could hear it in the living room, the adjoining wall. So, and there's two sheets of drywall with an air gap for the fire break. So. Um, but all right, um, I'm going to go ahead and end it. So Lama, I appreciate you hopping on there, buddy. No problem. So, so appreciate you tuning in. So I'm going to, uh, we'll talk to you. I'll see you on another live stream. Oh, my wife was silent. Hey, just get her some 2209s and plug her in. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we know she's electronic. Poor <laughs> 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 Dave. All right. Okay. We'll catch you later, Llama. Thanks later, for hopping man. on. All right. So let's uh let's do this. So hey man, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. It seemed like uh people were having a good time. So I really do like that uh the community here for the 3D printing community, but again, my channel isn't just about 3D printers, it's about lots of other things. So, you know, it's about a workflow, about a guy that's handicapped, inspiring other people to get up and say, hey, I could do something if this one-legged guy could do it. So there's a lot more content coming to this channel, whether it's remodeling my inside my garage, other projects, um, working on cars in the future, that'll be next, because um, I have three cars in desperate need of intention. So, and uh, I just got delivered some dinner. So that's also a good thing. <laughs> so, um, but uh, again, I really appreciate everyone tuning in and uh, I enjoy all the chats that people were throwing out. Hopefully people that won, hey, and then some good filament. So, so I appreciate everyone tuning in to Tripod's Garage. So have a pleasant day, evening, night, or whenever you decide to maybe even rewatch this. Um, but there will be a review, final review on this uh, artillery hornet printer in the coming weeks so be on the lookout for my overall opinion on it so again all my opinions are my own whether someone sends it to me or i purchase it myself so we'll catch you the next time on tripods garage <laughs>